Hi there YouTube, Mark Fahir here and this time with a package and I think a build video of something that I've been waiting for for quite some time and uh, I'll show you a box this is a box that I got in the mail today and the sender is Gideon's Logic Architecture. Now, for those in the know, will probably know, this is actually an FPGA Commodore 64 motherboard. Now, alongside this, I actually got some other, uh, other things as well. I've got this, which is a reproduction C64 C case. Now, it doesn't come with a keyboard, so what did I get? I got a replacement C64 or C16 keyboard. It has gray keys, my case is black, and I thought I'd go for a, a Commodore 16 type of look. Um, let me see, I also got some, some other bits. I got some brackets, some keyboard brackets and stuff. So yeah, let's take out the motherboard and see what it looks like. Oh, yeah, and I'm filming this actually after being uh, awake for quite some time. It's like one of these videos. I, I did, an, uh, I did a um, Chameleon 64 video like years back, and that was just right after a night shift. <laughs> and actually this, this one arrived the moment I started my night shift. It was a, a 20, 23, uh, what is it now? 28, 32 hour shift. And I got a notification that uh, this package arrived. I, I'd been waiting for it for quite some time. I had to go through the entire shift knowing that it was safe in, in my home because the wife was there to, uh, to pick it up. But uh, yeah, let's open, let's open that. Let's open that package and show you the motherboard. And this actually is what I'm greeted with. It's a, it's a placeholder box and this actually, this is the motherboard. It's uh, quite quite small. Uh, I believe there's a power supply in this. I'm not sure, but I think there is. I think I've ordered one. So uh, so yeah. Yeah, and I'm right. It's uh, it's a power adapter, which is good. So here it is in all its glory, the ultimate 64. It has serial 804, it's version, whoops, serial 804, and it's uh, version 1.2. Yeah, the underside is not that great. <laughs> it's just uh, a bit bare, barren, but uh, yeah, great stuff. I mean, it looks like a stellar, whoops. So it looks like a stellar motherboard. It's very tiny, isn't it? You can actually have uh, two SIDs installed. I may actually put in one of the SIDs. I've got a jar with C64 uh, chips and stuff. I might actually put a real SID in there. Not sure yet. So here you can actually see my C64 C reproduction case. And you see what I'm going uh, for with these... Uh, the C16 keyboard because this actually is a C64 C16 C64 ultimate <laughs> I'm not sure what to call it uh, but I'm going to build it now you probably have seen uh, a lot of people uh, building uh, rebuilding a Commodore 64 so it may not actually been be that interesting but um, I'll show you some snippets so what did I get with it? Well, I've got a LED cable with connector, which is a bit longer, and it's an orange LED. Just, yeah, th thought it would look cool with the uh, black case. Then I've got a C64 C serial number and sticker. I've gotten a set of mainboard screws, uh, some other screws, which I'm not really familiar with, and C64 keyboard mounts. And uh, it comes with uh, with a user guide, which I am going to to check out. It really shows you how to build it, so that's actually quite nice. Uh, serial number six screw set, three by eight, retro black standard edition. Anyways, let's uh, build it. 
I'm actually not going to use these metal um, keyboard mounts because they actually will interfere with the uh, with the connector and and the motherboard. So um, yeah, I've I've gotten these. I've gotten these special Ultimate 64 keyboard mounts, 3D printed, and. Uh, Or, or it. So, yeah, it, it basically um, provides a, a good mounting thing for the uh, for the ultimate ultimate 64. So yeah, so they mount something like this over one over here and one over there, and the motherboard fits over it. And this little T bracket actually holds the uh, C64 Ultimate in place. And there's even a bracket for the uh, user port I.O. on the uh, on the Ultimate to, uh, to have it more contained. So yeah, great stuff. <laughs> of course, you see that I became... I came well prepared. Okay, so there's some brackets in place over here. Uh, a surround for the uh, for the I.O. Um, it comes with these come with these circular things that you can actually put the uh, the uh, motherboard screws in so that they don't have to bore down all the way into the plastic and it's it's pretty secure there's this T junction that holds the bar in place over here there's a surround for the power jack and there's actually a, a power button power button reset button thing I'm not sure if you can see I'll show it in the finished product, but uh, it, 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 it is surrounded a bit more, so it's actually quite good. Now, I do have to screw down those, uh, those uh, keyboard uh, brackets, and they're a ton better than the, uh, the metal ones. So, uh, so yeah. Yes, and I've appeared to have mounted my, uh, my keyboard on the... Uh, on the special keyboard stand with the uh, keyboard all connected up and stuff so uh, yeah let's see if I can find a SID chip so time to test um, it seems to be working the power brick that it came with uh, didn't want to work but luckily I had the same brick similar brick from uh, my uh, C64 reloaded motherboard, which uses the same voltage pinout, and uh, it worked. To avoid copyright issues, the system, when you first turn it on, uh, gives you this screen. It doesn't even use a Commodore 64 font. Uh, basically, what you do is you put uh, the kernel, the uh, character, and the basic BIOS files. Uh, you put them on the uh, USB stick, you uh, format it to FAT32, you stick that in the uh, USB and it detects it and you just uh, flash uh, the appropriate files to the appropriate uh, names within the menu system. And uh, if you reset, boom, you got your uh, Commodore 64 all uh, working they uh, do that in order to avoid copyright issues because all these Commodore you know BIOS files OS things um, most of them um, can be still be uh, in, in some sort of legal infringement thing so uh, you can easily get them from uh, many of the C64 emulation packages because some of them like Vice actually comes with these files so you basically uh, take them out of the emulation package and put them inside you can also use uh, uh, legal sources I'll show them okay the legal sources for your files can be found on this this is the C64 Forever package and you have the Amiga Forever. This is great for Amiga emulation but if you want to have your emulation as legal as possible use something like this. So when it is all built and put together it looks like this. Um, I've stuck C16 keycaps 
on a C64 keyboard. Uh, you can't use the uh, C16's keyboard because it has a different um, internal mapping. It just doesn't work with a C64 despite it having the same connector. Um, so basically uh, I transplanted all the keys. Now um, the people that are familiar with the C64 will notice that quite a few of these keys have uh, have different labels on them. Now certain people have actually uh, changed around some of the keys and you can actually change them around to be more like uh, a C64 keyboard. The thing is that these keys are all shaped in a certain way to uh, be housed on a certain row on the keyboard. So if you do that um, they will slightly look out of place. I just opt for these uh, for the C16 look with the keys in the proper C16 uh, place. I think it just looks stellar. Uh, there's an orange LED I've put in um, and uh, these brackets, th these quite expensive brackets, 23, 24 euros, dollars, um, it comes with a special power button uh, that slides on top of the little yeah, little rod that actually is the uh, the regular power button, and uh, it, it also comes with an uh, with a surround for the uh, for the uh, yeah for the uh, for the power plug. And what it also does is that on this side, it actually provides a surround for the USB, and on the inside, it actually. Uh, make sure that the uh, motherboard sits in place but yeah this is my uh, yeah this is my C16 uh, like system now another modern system that I have which is actually quite a lot more heavy this is my C64 uh, reloaded which is a newer motherboard using the old chips uh, but it has different features like uh, uh, S-Video out, stereo sound out. And um, yeah, I was using this uh, as my main system, got the same case for it. And this is uh, a C64 uh, C keyboard. It's a bit yellow, but it actually looks quite nice on this. And I've uh, put a C64 C sticker on it. It's actually quite hard to remove the original sticker, so it actually is a bit warped that you can only see it when the uh, light is reflected of it. But it looks it looks great. So this uh, is my main C64, but it's going to repla be replaced by this, and this is the Ultimate 64. They use the same power brick. Uh, Gideon already got back to me on the on the failed power brick that it shipped with um, so we're just gonna have uh, have it have that replaced and um, I hook it up over HDMI uh, but you can also hook it up over the uh, standard video uh, composite video uh, yeah I've actually put two SIDs in there uh, two 9 volt SIDs let's take a look as you can see I've put in two 9 volt revision 5 uh, SIDs. They're not the best but they're the newer incarnation uh, with the lower voltage and you can actually run them without heat sinks. I am going to heat sink them properly I guess. Um, you can run this board without these SIDs, without the old chips inside but there's people that say that the SID cannot be replaced so uh, ideally you would have one old and one new SID in there you know with the different um, uh, filters and stuff actually the emulated SID is pretty good as well now if you put two of these in there or a SID reloaded everything uh, that fits in a SID socket can actually uh, work in this, mo in, in this board um, but it's actually possible to um, to uh, to have uh, stereo SIDs and you can have the filters uh, uh, spaced out left and right and stuff so you can actually have uh, a bit of a sort of stereo uh, sound uh, coming out of just singles single SID 
tunes even, which is actually pretty cool. And I've I've never heard the C64 sound as good as it does, especially for example the uh, L Man Mark Klein tunes. They they work just amazing. And uh, yeah, I think it's just um, a matter of turning it on and and showing you uh, what this all uh, can do, I guess. Okay, so what do I use to record the footage of my C64 Ultimate? I'm actually using the Live Gamer Portable Avermedia. Uh, it records HDMI. It uses a USB power plug. I'm not going to power this off the C64, but I'm going to stick it in my computer and grab the footage uh, from the computer and uh, do some narration over it. Uh, sadly, this only grabs at 25 or 30 frames per second, so some interlaced effects might not be possible. I'm just going to show you a couple of games, a couple of demos, just to see how it works. Um, so yeah, let's go take a look. This actually is captured with my uh, Live Gamer Portable at 30 frames per second, so not ideal. And this actually is the first bit of software that I actually ran <laughs> on my uh, Ultimate 64, which is a small basic uh, demo that I've uh, written, just you know, just to have as a uh, as a nice thing to show you guys. But let's uh, check out some uh, some more. So the interface is actually quite familiar to that of the Ultimate or the, the Ultimate Plus. Uh, here I show you the settings that I have on my uh, Ultimate C64, like the uh, clock. There's a real-time clock on there. There's also a specific card, which I think you can actually have a fake printer, a printer that uh, outputs to PNG files, which is also quite good. Um, yeah, a lot of settings, probably uh, in need of a, of a separate video of its own. Okay, I've managed to hook up my Aver Media and grab footage at 50 frames per second. I'll show you two small clips after this. Then I'm just gonna call this video quits and more direct footage and me demonstrating the unit uh, with a direct video grab will be in a second part. No extensive footage in this part, but this video has been long enough. I must say I really like the unit. I've been playing a ton of games with it. I found it very compatible. And uh, yeah, just small clipped samples of some video to come.